Hey guys, what's up? Disney Nuts here. As you can see today, we are at Epcot, and today we're going to be hanging out with a good friend of mine, Thrills of Magic, right after this. I'm here with Thrills of Magic and I'm going to be hanging out with him today. I'm going to be trying to learn a little bit of how he vlogs with his equipment and all the fun stuff and today um, I'm letting him take charge of what we're going to be doing and we're going to be actually walking around the World Showcase taking photos of the top areas. We're going to start going the Canada side because the sun is coming from this side um, and down from this side. So um, let's do it. Let's go. I'm going to wait until we get actually into the World Showcase but sounds good to me uh, to, to vlog properly. Sounds good to me. So how do you normally handle this stuff when you're doing Well, in this case, when they got photo pass here, what I'll do, I'll just stand on the side over there and you don't come out on the photo, which is perfect. And you can always get a really good angle. Now, in this case, since they're tilted somewhat towards the left, we can stand on this side and still get some really good shots without interrupting any of the photo pass stuff going on. Now, a tip like he's doing is always uh, look at your photos and check them before you leave the location because sometimes, uh, even though uh, you think you may have gotten a good shot, it's always good to go back and check because once you're here, take advantage of the moment. When it comes to these guys, um, one thing I would probably recommend is that the f-stop, I usually bring it up. And the reason for that is that if you're shooting in an angle, mm -hmm. if you shoot like a really wide f-stop, like 2.8 or even 3, mm -hmm. what's going to happen, this guy's going to be in focus, but these guys are going to be out of focus. So I usually go bringing it up little by little, like 5 or 6, depending on on uh, how, how far back they're going. But I guess we can start with Bambi down here and then Sounds good to me. Yeah. come back to Flower and Thumper. Okay, we're coming up on Bambi here and the cool thing that I like of this one is how there's so much space in the back. So you got here Bambi with all the World Showcase in the back and uh, let's go ahead and take some shots, see how it looks. Now also a cool thing of shooting uh, this in somewhat tight where you have Bambi filling up the frame you actually take out most of the people that are around here. So uh, even though I think it's a cool shot, everything in, in the frame, uh, you are able to um, somewhat crop it and give the isolated feeling that you're alone here. Okay, now another cool technique is actually shooting from the bottom like he's doing right now. And the reason for that is when you shoot upwards in an angle, it makes the objects that you're shooting look bigger. Ever since I started doing uh, a little more work for other people, okay, I have to be mindful of taking like horizontal and a vertical. Gotcha. Tiger, Piglet, and Eeyore, as well as Winnie the Pooh over there and the rabbit. Okay, so for these two guys, what we're going to do, we're going to try to shoot it in an angle because even though um, it'll look cool, we shoot it head on, but since we got the, uh, uh, the donkey over there, it's it somewhat looks like in an angle. a little like pecking over here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's go try to do some shots with this, and we're going to try to put the, the donkey straight so it looks um, somewhat cool in the frame, and then obviously uh, Tigger hopping next to him. Okay, again, here he is uh, shooting low, which is always an awesome uh, effect you're gonna get on the photos. Because again, once you're shooting upwards, it makes everything look bigger. Now, the same thing with this one, I would probably recommend shooting at an angle. That way we get poo somewhat straight uh, with the uh, entrance of the location here. Okay, the next stop area we come up here is the one of Captain Hook and Peter Pan. Uh, these guys were here a couple of, uh, have been here for a couple of years now, and this is always an awesome spot. To France. I'm also trying to shoot one of my princess videos while we're doing this. Okay, so we're coming up on the France Pavilion, and the first top area we're going to see is actually the Belle and the Beast, which is awesome. 
and that those two guys have been there actually for a couple of years now okay so this is actually really strange that this area is pretty much empty hey i know that guy i follow him on instagram <laughs> awesome now a couple of spots we can do this guy uh these two is actually head on like uh andres is doing right now or we can actually shoot in an angle and the angle is pretty cool because what i like is that you got the uh uh, the building on the top and you got the windows and everything so we're just talking about uh, the photo back there with uh, beauty and the beast and about the composition and one thing that i always try to follow and even though like we're, they're saying it's a rule but you really don't yeah, need to it's, follow it it's called the rule of thirds and the rule of thirds yeah and it's when you see those little those lines on your phone or when you're editing you always try to put the tip where the, the lines intersect on an eyeball tip of the castle uh, a hand or something and sometimes it looks good but sometimes you just tweak around it so uh, but that's usually one of the things I try to do as for composition so uh, yeah and that ties into like if you need to get your composition after the fact yes when you're cropping for wherever it is that you're uploading yep. that kind of guides you but also Sometimes it, it's never gonna fit perfectly. Exactly, you know? it's never, that, that's, that's correct, yeah. Okay, so now there's a couple of uh, things that are happening in this frame here. For example, you got the signs here in the bottom and then you got Miss Piggy in the back as well as the mirror that's behind her. So stuff like this, I'll probably open up, uh, actually close down the f-stop, like something like 5.6 so I get everything in focus and everything looks nice and neat. Just looking for angles. Yeah. We could get like um, one shooting past this little uh, whatever you want to call it, that mannequin there. Yeah, that uh, yeah, it's like a get that out of focus. Get that, get something in sort of the foreground, midground. I don't know what the sun is coming right down on. Yeah, which is great because it gets the shadows out of the mouth and somewhat because exactly. So you get more detail. That's the yes. hardest thing, though. Is, is, yes, is all of that because it is one color. The sun, when it's directly on it, can create some harsh shadows and make it hard to, like, do you even it out? When yes, you're, yes, and it's actually one of the, doing, yes, editing? yes, and it's actually one of the things that I always, it's one of the five things that I usually do first, is even out the colors, mm -hmm. and even out the tones, which is what exactly what you're talking about, which is where you want to even out, like, the, the, the neck and stuff like that. It's not that you have to put everything bright, but at least that doesn't look really dark. So that's, yes, even it out is the one thing that I usually put there that I tell everybody you always need to do. This is hard to tell what's going on. Now I've been shooting all morning with, uh, with this lens, which is the um, Tokina 12 to 28, which is the ultra wide one. So it gives me that really cool effect. Similar to what you're watching on this video has an ultra wide angle as well. So that way I can, uh, you know, get some uh, random stuff as to wide shots and stuff like that. So at uh he's looking at the times here so we can take some photos with uh and video in his case he's for his next video uh asking the princesses a question but the question you have to see when his video comes out i'm not going to say anything so make sure you check out Thanks. his channel so i'm not going to spoil it so okay so we just met bell which was awesome she is great and i was able to get my photo with uh thrills of magic here so here's how the photo looks here how we came out Okay, so you, yeah, let's do it. Be all right with yeah, that? Yeah, let's do it, man. I'm all good. So uh, we're gonna head over here to um, Morocco and hopefully meet Jasmine. Uh, see what's going on. Now it's funny, even though there's no top areas here in the Morocco pavilion, there's still this, uh, I guess, set of flowers and arrangement which looks really nice. And um, talking about Urban Spice Garden. Okay, so we're going to head inside the Morocco Pavilion and the reason for that is that Jasmine is actually inside here so we're going to hopefully be in a spot with AC. Okay, so we're in the queue line, which is nice. We got some AC in here. Got some renditions of the lamp. It's pretty cool.
is our next target. <laughs> I think we have a little bit of time because Milan won't pop out again until 2. 2 o'clock? And then Snow White doesn't pop out again. Okay, so we're here at the Japan Pavilion and we're going to try out this thing called Frushi, which is what Andres is trying out. So um, I'm going to order one as well. There's no photo for it, so um, it's going to be interesting. And again, it's this. So let's give it a try here at the uh, Japan Pavilion. Hello. Hello. Um, a Frushi? Let's go with the Frushi. Okay, so there's even chopsticks here you can use if you want to. Awesome, thank you. Okay, let's dig in. Okay, so we're coming up here on the USA Pavilion. And right here we have Mickey and Minnie. And um, taking a bunch of shots of this before the nighttime as well. But you can see here he's vlogging here and talking about them. But this one's awesome because you can see the flowers are so overgrown. It makes it look awesome, makes a Mickey and Minnie be like buried inside the flowers. Is there any uh, topiaries in Italy? Uh, yes, Lady and the Tramp, and there's a really that's a really good one. That was actually one that Disney featured, which is really cool. At the day one, and uh, so we'll head over there. Which this is an awesome, awesome location that they put them in this year. They used to be against the wall. Here, the backdrop that they have a spaceship Earth is really impressive. Look at this. <laughs> I think we really did get lucky on that one. Yeah, because that's that's rare that that spot there is there's nobody in it. Trust me. There's always somebody trying to come out on the shot or something like that, so. Okay, so we just arrived to the Germany Pavilion and of course we got my favorite, Snow White, as well as Dopey. They did so well, right? There's a lizard right there on the ear of uh, poor Dopey. <laughs> You've been photobombed by the lizard. Okay, so we got um, some treats here. Andrews was pretty nice to treat me to this, which is the following. It's got applesauce on top and it's potato, um, made with potato, so uh, let's give it a try. Okay, so we're in the line here. Now we're gonna see Milan and uh, hopefully take some shots. Okay, so if you move a little bit to the left here and where you see that you do not have these items in front, like here, and you flip your camera sideways like this, you get an awesome photo, photo of the reflections of the dragon in the water like you see here. And you can always uh, bring out the reflections with some clarity and Lightroom, which is really cool. Now what he's doing is pretty cool because uh, you'll see that he's zooming in really, really tight into the item here, which in this case, it's the rat. And the cool thing of that, once you zoom in really tight, you'll see that everything else comes out somewhat out of focus, which is really cool. And it gives a really cool effect to it. So um, sometimes you gotta go low and close like that. Yeah, I was trying to get low and fast so I could get some of the, the water behind there in that angle. Because otherwise it's just a It's just a green, grass. yeah. So. Awesome. And there's a couple of pandas over here as well um, that everybody seems to forget that they're there, but they're there hanging out. China, we got now this is a tricky shot to be honest with you because um, you can see there's a bunch of people crossing here so what I did is you can shoot them at an angle like this from over here because if not you, there's just no way that you're gonna stand over there and be able to shoot them head-on it will be pretty difficult you'll always get people in your frame Seek the spirit of Norway, find peril and adventure. What do they find now? I, I guess a <laughs> crusty castle, frozen castle. A crusty frozen castle, that's all they find now, I guess. Glow? Yeah, it's got a weird, creepy glow to it. In this case, we're actually including some of the flowers in the shot, so it gives a really cool effect. Um, I did take, take it twice. I took it once, focusing on the flowers, and one focusing on the... Uh, in the back yeah it's a cool shot man yeah. it's a cool shot it's something different yeah i just focus i don't know if i have the uh the f-stop 
too Correct. low, but like the one flower is basically. Yep. Now this uh, spot here is actually another really cool spot because here is when the sun starts to set, you get all the sunset over here, as well as this guy just looking over to the left of everybody coming uh, from the World Showcase. So um, let's take a couple shots here. And I'm just already beat me to it. Okay, so we're heading inside to possibly your favorite location, which is Anna and Elsa, I'm told. <laughs> Who told you? I don't know. Somebody told me. A little birdie told me that Anna's also is your favorite. So, oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. That's how to start. Though. That's exactly. Especially on the internet. Something that I like a lot that uh, is for the Flower and Garden Festival is that as time goes by, everything starts growing like crazy, which is awesome. For example, that flower right there, that white flower, that wasn't there a couple of weeks ago, which is really cool because once you come here, everything sort of like feels like it's sunken into the flowers, like. Uh, like the Mickey Mini that we saw at the USA Pavilion and the sisters here at the Norway Pavilion. Okay, now something that Andres brought up is that he was making fun of me because supposedly I've taken this shot a thousand times and he's seen it probably a thousand times. But always try to make the photo your own, which um, it's not that you can't use another photo as a base to take your photo, but always try to add a little tweak to it, you know, maybe even on the post editing, the colors, or even cropping something out, or even adding something in if you want to. Always make the photo your own and always have fun with it, which is what I always tell everybody. Don't feel that you need to copy somebody's photo to be able to get likes on it because trust me, after a while, what's going to happen, you're going to get frustrated, you're not going to feel happy, and it's just fake in a certain way. You want to put your art as your art and be proud of it. If it's something that uh, maybe right away people may not like it, but it's your art and it's what looks good, so um, just make it your own, guys. I want to see what this looks like with a zoom lens. Switch lens? I'm in no rush, man. You're more than welcome to peel out and... Now talk about trying to get that angle. Check that out, guys. He is literally inside the bushes with his arm fully stretched and taking the shot. That's what I'm talking about right there. Okay, so we're... Um, Andrew is here switching lenses putting on his prime lens and if a prime lens is basically a lens that is fixed in the zoom range and I think what's that a 50 you got on there 50, 50 millimeter equivalent f1.7 there you go f1.7 in the case of the Canon we have the 1.8 and the more expensive 1.4 which I do yeah, not have we're not messing with I know we're not messing with that level so he's actually trying some different things like putting the flower uh, behind her as well as in front of her so it all um, you know just trying different angles to see what works and again like I always tell everybody once you're here take advantage take as many photos as you possibly can you can always delete them later but nothing worse than um, going home and realizing that you should have taken that shot yeah, I got you it. know spend that extra two minutes and get yeah that. take two minutes get and the shot rather than have to wonder or come back next year exactly and same thing put in another lens try it out even if you don't think that the shot you're going to take will work with that lens You'll be surprised many times I'll go at home and see the photo and realize, wow, this with this lens, I didn't think it was going to look good and actually looks pretty cool. Okay, so we just headed out of the Norway Pavilion, took a bunch of shots there of Anna and Elsa. Andres did a bunch of swaps of lenses, which yes, is cool. That way you make it sure you get... It was a lot of fun. I learned how those lenses behave. There you go. It was <laughs> nice to kind of know what you're, what's in your arsenal. Cause yes. It's, most of the time, I don't know if it's out of sheer laziness, but I just use a, a zoom lens that has a fixed aperture. Gotcha. And I call it good. You call it good? But no, it's like I see something that's been shot so many times. Yeah. Let me go the extra steps. Man. There you go. Now I know what I can do with that zoom lens. I know what I can do with that nifty 50. There you go. Okay, so we're just about to meet Snow White. Um, we're just about to uh, ask her the questions, I guess. I'm just going to ask her the questions. I love how you're the one making the behind the scenes. <laughs> I know, right? Behind the scenes video. <laughs> yep. So Snow White was a very soft speaker. Okay, so hopefully it came out good. Um, I'm going to actually, this is like close enough where I'm going to listen to it later. Okay. And go meet Snow White again if I need to. Okay. So if the footage isn't usable. You've got to come back and do it again. this one time. Now I think for me that's probably the hardest part to be honest with you. Trying to get it all in one shot. Um, I honestly don't know how you do it sometimes. Or, yeah. Oh, it's. I've had a lot of other YouTube channels and videos and things that have put me in front of the camera. Okay. So I have experience with just ad living speaking and stuff gotcha. like that. So it's easy for me to be uh, to talk. Gotcha. Sometimes it's harder for me to stop talking and to, to <laughs> okay. be more concise. Gotcha. I can ramble for 
way too long. Well, that, that's an art. Yeah, that's I know how you do it. That's so really what I try to focus on is like how do I do it efficiently and in an interesting way. Gotcha. That's what I'm focusing on. Okay. How do I keep it interesting? That's cool. Well, you're doing really good, man. So we're going to go ahead and shoot some of these guys in the arm shadow. I really like the simple one, but I don't know why he's the one that's the only one fully in color. Yeah. Uh, maybe they wanted him to stick out in that sort of way, but I think uh, we'll get like a nice wide shot of everybody. We can go low with a lot of this puts down here and then get a nice close up one. Okay, so we're coming up on the last top areas here exiting the Mexico Pavilion. And this one is pretty interesting because you got a bunch of things going on here. Uh, first of all, you got Spaceship Earth on the back, which is pretty cool. It provides for some really cool backdrop. And uh, if it's nighttime, you can even get the monorail doing some trails and stuff like that. So. Okay, so we moved over to the corner over here to try to get some different angles, um, somewhat try something different. So I'm um, here with Thrills and Magic and we just wrapped off an amazing day here at Epcot. We shot literally, I think, all the top areas we did and he saw all the princesses and asked them a question. Uh, which I will not reveal <laughs> until they see his video. But at the end of the video, like I always do when I hang out with people, like like in this case, uh, Andres here, I ask him two questions because I want people to know, you know, how they got involved with the whole Disney thing and how they started vlogging. So I guess my first question is, what got you into Disney? Right, what's what's where does where the love come from? Uh, it's uh, it's kind of a family thing. Okay. Uh, both parents very much into it. Uh, my mother especially and kind of got raised on watching movies and stuff so okay. i was that kid like nine years old um being up in the northeast i was ordering the videotapes yes of VHS. the, the uh, vacation planning videos it was oh, wow. a not so subtle way to um hint me hey maybe maybe we should go maybe yeah, like, hey, it, yeah. i had them on repeat and i remember also watching like a lot of the behind the scenes stuff as a kid on the Disney Channel and that's kind of what captivated my attention to, um, to theme parks in general because I, I would live close to theme parks and roller coasters and that's what I've grown up with but then there's that extra step of uh, okay. Disney, the, the immersiveness that's that awesome. Disney brought so that's really what captivated my attention about the parks and trying to get down there to the point where I was in a dance school. Uh, okay. I used to take tap dance classes when I was like 9 or 10 okay. and uh, my <laughs> Sorry. school wanted to go to go to Disney okay. and we, I record, we recorded a video, sent it and we ended up doing a, a little tap show in Tomorrowland one That's summer. Awesome. And we got to go for two weeks and from there it was just like uh, I wanted to go every year. Now, if you don't know uh, his videos, because he does, he has an awesome YouTube channel as well, and they're all about a bunch of theme parks. It's not only Disney, because I've seen stuff from SeaWorld, mm -hmm. um, at Six Flags, I think I did see, yeah, all yeah. this other stuff. So it's a really cool channel. I love it. I check it out all the time, because it's not only the Disney bubble, which is what I love. And you, <laughs> yeah, because many people stay Disney, Disney, but there's so much out there, and that's what I like yeah. about the channel. Yeah, for sure. There's something to appreciate, you yeah. know, in, in all other parts that are out there you know there's somebody behind the helm that's trying to put some attention into this yes and I, I like to highlight the things there that I appreciate about any of the parts that I go to that's awesome yeah no and and, and again I, I, I love the style that you have it's very straightforward very relaxed it's not rushed um, <laughs> yeah I, I love it it's very simple it's straight to the point there's no flashy stuff in there you go right to the point this yeah is. yeah I'm not a big fan of like b-roll and yes. like, let's play music and, and yeah and some special effects on it boom, 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 there you go and here you go flash and no yeah. I, I, I think it's a reflection of just how I am and it's just like I just want to go to the park take it in I like to okay. take it at a slower pace than, gotcha. than people might usually especially if they're on that that type of trip where they're dividing and conquering and they got a spreadsheet of like every yes. minute to minute thing that yes. they have going on when you're here there's a lot to take in there's a lot of forethought that goes into any sort of these disney parks especially if you're talking about stuff like main street or yeah. any of the lands at the magic kingdom yeah so it's nice to take it at my own pace i'm a little more laid back than, than yes. most people so yes you are so i tried to like let that just represent me and if you're joining me at the parks in my okay. vlogs then my vlogs will also kind of embody that that's cool yeah that's cool okay so again guys thanks for hanging out and again thanks andres for letting me hang out today and shadow him on his vlogging making i learned a tons of things that i've been trying to improve on my vlogging so 
thanks a million for letting me hang out oh, with you sure. today. I really appreciate it. This was awesome. And we got to do it again on your next trip here. So. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. So my name is Disney Nuts. This is the first time watching these videos. And I do videos of Disney photography as well as other random stuff. And today I also do videos of hanging out with photographers and bloggers. In this case, with Andres from Thrills of Magic. Yep. So make sure you check out his channel. We'll put a link to it. And until then, guys, stay awesome. See you later. Bye.